Hi there! Welcome to this tutorial on how to paint on a 3D object inside of Photoshop. I want to share with you one of my favorite places to grab 3D models from. This is TurboSquid.com. The model I'm going to be using for today's demonstration is female head underscore new 3D model. When you find this model, you're going to see several different poses to give you a better idea of what you're downloading. You're also going to notice that there's a set of teeth floating out there. That's okay, that's normal. When you start animating a 3D model, you need to have a separate mouth, a separate set of teeth inside the mouth in order to be able to work with the dialogue better. That's why you get two meshes one large one for the head and one small one for the mouth as a separate entity. Now, go on over to the free download button. For our purposes, I found that working on the object file does a lot better. Just uh, think about the program that you're going to be going and exporting into. Like if you're going to be going to Maya, try to try to think about what you'll need to be able to to seamlessly export from Photoshop to Maya. I found that the object file tends to do better because of the support for most of the 3D programs that are out there. So go ahead and choose the object file and download. I'm going to quit my browser because you'll notice that I am running QuickTime and I'll also be running, running Photoshop at the same time. Because I'm screen recording and working on a 3D model, my machine is going to become slower, so I have to get out, as, out of as many programs as possible. Okay, now navigate to where you have that download stored, and I'm going to right click, open with, and I am going to choose Photoshop CS 5.5. Now. Most of my students out there in my classes at Hack, at Hack Harrisburg Area Community College, you guys are going to have Photoshop CS6 or Photoshop CC. The reason I chose to go back to CS5.5 is because I don't have enough RAM or a good enough video card to be able to work in 3D in CS6 or CC. Excuse me. <coughs> So, if you do have enough RAM and you can open your models in those other two versions of Photoshop, feel free. What we're doing is not going to change very much. Where it does change, I'll be sure to let you know about, about the, how to deal with that. Okay, so here's our model right inside of Photoshop. Let's spin her around a little bit and get used to our, our environment. I am looking for this guy. This is the Object Rotate tool. If you're working in CS6 or in CC, you'll need to activate the Move tool, and then you'll be able to get into the 3D objects. So you're still looking for the same tool, but it's just in a different spot. Once you have the Object Rotate tool, you're going to notice this widget up here at the top. You can rotate with the widget. That is just fine in any of the directions that the axes allow, X, Y, or Z. Great. Yes, you can see our floating teeth over here, can't you? But also know that you don't have to use this widget. You can also click and start dragging directly on your screen. So what, find whatever works the best for you. If you feel like you're a little bit overwhelmed and you can't really make things get oriented the way that you want them to be, you can always find the position drop down box and choose one of the, the views from there. You can choose to view it from the front, you can choose to view it from the back. See, these are all great things. I'm going to go to the front. Now that we've figured out how to move our model around, let's start painting. Grab your brush tool, hit the letter B, and choose a nice skin tone color. And this could be any color that you wish. 
If you want to follow along with the color that I have, I have E-D-D-B-B-E. -E. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to start having some problems here pretty soon. Yeah. Watch what happens when I spin my model. Okay, spin her that way, spin her back. Now wait a second. Some of that stuff is not where I put it. Like, you see this little bit down here? That's because Photoshop is freaking out a little bit. It hasn't completely recognized all of the different curves that you're going to need to have be, to be able to paint on, but there's a way to make it do that. Go up to, excuse me, let's undo this paint. Hit Control-Z a couple of times. There we go. Have a blank model. It's going to take a second for my machine to catch up. <laughs> Your professor needs to find a, another machine with a lot more RAM. Okay, I'm going to get back to my front position. There we go. Now, before we start painting it again, you're going to go up to the 3D menu, and you're going to come down to Reparameterize UVs. I keep working on how to say that, and I have, I'm not quite there yet. So if you can say that better, that's great. So that's what we're looking for, and it's going to just map the skin a little bit better so Photoshop understands how to paint. Click that. Tell it OK. Now, you want to choose low distortion for what we are doing. Let it think for a minute. There we go. Now hit the, the brush tool, B for brush, and start painting again. And you should see that the paint applies a lot more evenly than it did before. Now, this is awesome and wonderful. So just have some fun here, you know, paint your bottle as much as you want. It's, it's actually okay that I painted her eyeballs. You'll see why in just a little bit. But avoid painting the teeth over here. I'm going to go to a slightly bigger brush so I can get more of this done here. When you're ready to rotate, hit letter K to get into that object rotate tool. Hit letter B to go back to the brush. Now you'll probably wind up getting some of this paint on those teeth, but that's okay. I'll show you how to fix it in a bit. Hit letter K again, let's rotate again. This is where you need to start being a little careful. Letter K again, and we get the top of her head and the top of her shoulders. Get the brush tool. B key for brush. Now, you'll probably notice that you've got a few little pixels here and there that just aren't painting properly. That's normal and par for the course. We will be able to get to them in just a minute. Now, you'll notice that I'm going at all of these different angles because we are working with a 3D object not all the paint is going to hit all the surfaces. <coughs> Excuse me, kind of recovering from a cold here. Okay, I'm going to rotate it one more time. There we go, get this side of the head.
Get as close to it as you can without hitting those teeth. Great. I went back into the object rotate tool and I'm going to come on back, excuse me, come back up here and choose front one more time. That looks really good. I'm going to change a couple more colors. Grab the zoom tool, hit the letter Z. Now you'll see the you'll see the places where I wasn't able to cover because they show up as gray pixels. So I'm going to go in a little closer. Hit K again and rotate slightly, see if I can get a little bit more. That's a little better. And that's better. Change the size of the brush if you need to. Remember the square bracket keys are what does can do this on the fly for you. The left square bracket key makes it smaller. The right square bracket key makes the brush larger. You'll notice it, an area here by the ear. That has nothing to do with what we are doing with our paint. That was how this UV model was made. So it's a little bit of a flaw, so I wouldn't worry about that. There we go. One more time. I'm going to rotate again, try to get a little bit more of those ears. I like to do as, as good of a job I, as I can with the 3D version before we go into the 2D version. Oh yes, by the way, as, as you are painting on your 3D model, remember, Photoshop is primarily a 2D painting program rather than a 3D painting program. So as you make these 3D models and you paint on them, excuse me, as you import these models, Photoshop simultaneously creates a 2D map that it understands and it translates translates the pigment onto that for you. So keep working with that and once you've got it to where it looks really good, you like what's happening, I'm going to suggest that you put in a little bit more information for your person here. I'm going to make the eyes the white Let's see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more on the eyes just to make it a little easier for me. Okay, there we go. Get the brush size you wish. Oh, and this is where, this kind of detail work, is where you're really going to wish that you had a tablet, a digital tablet to help you draw. If you don't have a digital tablet, just do as well as you can for our class. Like so. There we go, do them both. I had a little bit of an overspray onto the lower eyelid. If you're getting a lot of overspray that you don't expect, make sure that you check the hardness of your brush. If it's too soft of a brush, you'll get a lot of spread and that could be causing the problem for you. There we go. I'm going to correct some of that overspray right there. Okay. Let's back out. Okay. Now, you can see what I'm talking about. There's, there are a few little pixels here and there that just won't color properly. Now, you could spend hours trying to get the exact right angle that you need to by spinning with the object rotate tool. Or you can save yourself some, some headache and go into that 2D mode. Let's talk about how to access the 2D mode. If you come over to the layers panel, inside of the layer 
you're going to notice something down at the bottom called diffuse. If you double click on it, it will bring up that flat 2D model that I was talking to you about. The paint that you see here is everything that you just painted on the 3D model, just in a flat representation. <coughs> in the past, before Photoshop had these really great 3D tools, you would have to do something like this in order to paint on any kind of surface that you would bring in from a 3D model. It's called unwrapping the UV. You don't have to do this anymore, but it is nice because you can actually get in there on a pixel by pixel level and know exactly which part of the map that you need to paint. So let me show you how to create the wireframe that will help you map what you're working on. Go up to 3D. In my version of Photoshop, it says create UV overlays. In CS6 or CC, you're going to be looking for the create, create painting overlay. So it's a little different. And then choose wireframe. Ah, now it's starting to make a little more sense, isn't it? You can start to really recognize those features that we were painting on from before. Over in the layers panel, the top layer, that's the lines. That's the UV mesh. So I'm going to double click and rename this UV mesh. This is not the color. Layer one is going to be what we've been painting. So I'm going to call it paint. Whenever you paint inside of this, make sure that you're painting on the actual paint layer rather than the UV mesh layer. Now, I remember that I was having a problem on the face. So, I'm going to take a peek over here on this right side of the face and see if I can find those little pixels where I was having a problem. Here's a little spot here. Let's see, make sure you've got the right pigment. There's some stuff up here that needs to be colored in. If you think about those meshes on the ear, they're very, very complicated. And the more complicated the mesh is, the closer together the lines are. So you can see that there's a very, there's a very high concentration of mesh here and a low concentration of mesh on the skull. So the ear is definitely a much more complex graphic. So whenever you see gaps in the color, that's where you're going to need to go in and make sure that you repaint. So I'm just going to scoot around here. Oh, there we go. There's some more stuff around this ear that needs to be colored. Anything here? Yep. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's see if there's anything here on this neck. I'm holding down the shift key as I drag to stay inside the brush tool. I think this this is either part of the ear or it's part of the jaw. I'm not sure, so I'm going to leave that guy alone for right now. This one needs a little more help. Do try to be as accurate as you can while you color in these meshes, you know, rather than painting outside the lines. That one needs a little more work. There we go. Here's one that needs more. Make sure that your opacity is set to the proper level, too. That can make a big difference. Make it a lot easier to paint for you. Okay. Looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. 
Well, let's save that. I hit Control or Command S and see what it translates to back over here. That looks pretty good. Now you're probably wondering, oh my gosh, I see all these black lines. Don't worry. You can turn those black lines off if you want to see the model without them. You would go back into the B PSB file and simply toggle the visibility right there. And you go back. There we go. It's a little better. Still have a problem here or there. Now, this is just a quick rundown of how to do painting. If I were going to do this on a professional level, obviously I would spend more time and everything would have to be absolutely pix pixel perfect before I turned it into a, a, a boss. But this gets you a start and I hope that this really helped you. In the next video in this series we'll take a look at how to export what you've done and get that back into those wonderful 3D programs like Maya or Blender. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the, ne in the next film.